Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. I am feeling good today. I wanted to have some fun. We're gonna be hopping into uh, chat GPT to try and find some Amazon FBA product and trying to figure out if, hey, can I just type, simply type into this software and get a product idea? Is it that easy? Uh, let's see, we're gonna find out. So we're gonna say this. We're gonna say, first of all, chat GPT, predictive text model. You ask it a question, you give it a prompt, it will do it for you. So I'm gonna say, I am Amazon FBA seller. I want to build a brand for an enthusiast customer. So I'm going to give it some criteria here. I'm going to write this as if it's it's really what I'm looking for, right? So I don't just want like just I'm not just going to say like find me Amazon FBA product ideas. I'm going to start here. I want to build a brand for an enthusiast customer. Can you give me a list of ideas? Let's see what it comes up with. Eco-friendly outdoor gear. Okay, kind of uh like the core customer there is like, um, you know, maybe a hiker or, a, you know, camper, eco-friendly though. That's kind of like your brand message, get it? Artisan coffee and brewing equipment, tech gadgets for gamers. So, so what it's doing right now is it's giving me basically like hobbies and people that are interested in said hobbies. So we're not quite at products yet. So I, I do have some unique ideas about how we're gonna get to the product. So don't go anywhere just yet. Um, craft brewing supplies. Okay, I actually really like that one. I really like that one. So why don't we take that one? Can you give me a few specific products in this niche? Or I'll refer to it. I'll say a few specific products for number, because it'll know. That was number five. Okay, so brewing kits, specialty brewing ingredients, fermentation equipment, bottling and kegging supplies, cleaning and sanitation. So, okay, so this is really interesting, actually. This fits into kind of my criteria as an Amazon FBA seller and the way that I do it, which is specifically brand building, not just private label, because I'm looking for a person who's passionate and cares about an outcome. I'm then gonna go into those markets and look for if anyone has left a gap in that market. There's probably some players in all of these if they're big enough for an enthusiast customer to go look up uh, you know, options there, but are they coming to play? Do they have really high quality presentations, great branding, awesome listings, high quality products, or is it just so, so products? So let's see. So why don't we start with just brewing kits? Um, so we'll go to Amazon and we'll do brewing kits. And we're just going to see what pops up there. I'm not going to get specific just yet. Okay. And then from here, um, obviously there's probably going to be a few different things. And I, I've actually seen brewing kits before. I'm not uh, completely a novice in like understanding what these markets are being an Amazon seller and, you know, building brands on Amazon. I've, I've actually looked into this. So I, I do think there are a few things here that could potentially work, right? So we go to X-Ray, we open this up. And now what we're really looking for is high sales at this moment, just very generic, like very generic criteria that we're looking for, just sales, because that's where everything starts. Every journey just starts with people are already interested, they already buy it. And I'll be pleased to tell you, we've got $50,000 in sales going to a single hop IPA beer making kit, sells for $55. Um, and now we've also got $110,000 Okay, this is interesting. So it's not specifically the kit. It's more of, if we go back to our list here, bottle and kegging supplies. I would say that's where this falls into. They're actually doing the highest sales in the market. Now, granted, it's Amazon themselves. I don't really care when I see that. I know a few years ago, people were like, oh, don't go sell anything where there's like a name brand or Amazon selling it themselves. It's like, why? That's just customer interest. And the customer doesn't even think this way. By the way, most customers on Amazon just think Amazon's selling all these. Like if you ask most people, hey, do you know how Amazon really works? You're not buying from Amazon. You're not paying Jeffrey Bezos. You're buying from small companies. Most people don't know that. So when I see Amazon, I'm not scared away. I'm going, there's a lot of interest in this. And then is there anything else like that? And for the most part, what I'm seeing here is that I'm seeing there's a lot of kits full kits and we're even starting to see like sourdough kits and stuff that are totally irrelevant so i don't think this is oversaturated i think there's a lot of customer interest and there's not a lot of options so this is actually a pretty good idea um so hey ai good job round of applause on this one this is pretty cool now the cooler thing about this is that there's not one idea here there's actually like 12 ideas but some of them are kind of repeats of each other's so why don't we do this we'll say can you build me a customer avatar that would buy all of those things based on these reviews. 
And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the brewing kit reviews. We're gonna grab some of the top four listings from this market and see what their customer feedback is like. And that's gonna help us, you know, AI is really good, I think, and where I use AI in some cases is um, amalgamating data, right? Taking a bunch of stuff and putting it together. I don't think it's very good at coming up with novel ideas. So it's gonna repeat everything that it sees for the most part, right? So I'm not gonna ask it, how do I create a better product here? You know, it might be able to repeat some things that have been said, but I wouldn't design my packaging with it. I wouldn't just take what it said, take, basically take what it says with a grain of salt. However, if what it's saying is all based on real things, then it's probably accurate. You're just using it as a tool. Um, so we're gonna take this bad review here. We're gonna put that in there. We're gonna do a dash and then another quotation mark. We're gonna grab the voted most helpful one. We're gonna take that, we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna place it in quotation mark, and then we're gonna back off of this listing and we're gonna go try and find some other listings that we can use to do the same thing with, right? So we grabbed the just the basic option there first. And now let's head over to one of the um, the actual, you know, craft a brew kits. I think it was this one that was selling um, so much, but let me let me open up X-Ray one more time just to be sure, because I, I wanna grab the right ASIN, um, make sure we're pulling from one of the listings with the highest number of sales. They're likely to have the most reviews or close to the most reviews in the most reviews that are directly related to our specific customer. So we're gonna go into this listing now. It was the one that I saw before. Um, oh wait, no it's not. This is Oktoberfest Ale. We were looking at an IPA before. Um, either way, we're gonna go ahead and open up. Uh, we don't even need to go to the reviews actually. Just open Helium 10, top right corner, and you're gonna to go to Review Insights. By the way, there's a link in the description for a discount code to Helium 10. If you're not using Helium 10, I don't know what you're doing. It's the only software that you need. Um, wow, would we look at that? That is amazing. That's a really long review, and a lot of people are finding these very helpful. I'm gonna take this really long one, and I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna put that in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter there, because we've got a lot of data here. I just wanna see what it's coming up with at this point. So let's see, this is a good, launching point for us. So the, the home brewing enthusiast is our customer avatar. Name is John and the demographics are late twenties to early forties. It's a male in a, that equip that essentially says nothing if it's both, uh, may have a professional career, be a hobbyist, but likely interested in craft activities. So psychographics are brewing experience. So they're an intermediate home brewer with some prior experience in brewing beer or other beverages. Um, tried both all grain and extract brewing methods, passion for brewing. So this is one of the things that we wanna see. We wanna see that they actually care about a better product because guess what happens when no one cares about the quality of the product? The quality of the product is sold at an absolute minimum at the lowest price possible. If people start to care about the price of the product, then you can charge more for a significantly better product and be in a category of one, AKA competing against no one but yourself because you have such a different product than everyone else. Um, interest in quality and innovation. That's good to hear. And by the way, the reason I like taking those reviews is because like I said, it's taking all the data it's making, sorry, taking all the data that it's making these decisions off of and basing it off of those reviews. That's how it knew about like, he's tried both all grain and extract brewing methods. That was probably said in a review. Um, price consci conscious and dislikes overpaying and critical of product quality and pricing as seen in the first review. So they don't want us to go in and make a slightly better product and charge way more. We have to have a truly better product. Um, this is really interesting. So then we have brand loyalty, goals and challenges, uh, purchase behavior, research and read reviews before making a purchase. You have to have a high likelihood of um, perceived likelihood of achievement, meaning that you make a product and it is actually better than what's there. Customers say so, other customers hear that, and it's a cycle that grows up and up. Um, prefers products that offer good value and price. Open to trying new brands that align with his specific requirements as seen in the second review. Clear instructions and well-packaged kits. So that was probably a negative review on someone, not very good instructions, marketing and messaging. Highlight the quality of the value. Emphasize the uniqueness and innovation. Offer competitive pricing and promotions. Provide clear instructions and then showcase your brand as reliable and customer oriented choice for home brewing enthusiasts. So this brings me back to a point that I like to make often, which is that customers like to buy when they feel understood. They feel like this product was made for me. So why don't we do this? 
why don't we go i'm gonna i have a brand in mind that i think we can use to model so ukeg is a like nitro coffee company um or sorry growler works is the company um, so they have uh, this machine here this nitro cold brew maker i actually have one of these um it's really really cool and so they're in a category of one essentially right they made this patented design and made their own thing and it is they even have a carbonated uh beer kit to put beer in it but it would be interesting to see if we took this level of you know awareness of the quality of the product made they made this really high quality stainless steel thing and look at some of those customer complaints in a market like just craft home brewing for beginners and try and make something that's maybe not two hundred dollars but it's not 50. We, they said in the customer avatar they'd be willing to pay for a higher quality product they are price conscious so what if we had a product that was closer to maybe 79.99 was significantly better than everything that was offered here that would be pretty cool so i think that's one avenue that we just went down and kind of vetted a product that would potentially work um, has an enthusiast customer has existing sales and we know a little bit more about that person because of what we um, generated from the reviews and using this tool um, so let's do this again let's say can you find me three more enthusiast customers like john in different markets so I'm just curious, I'm just gonna play around and ask it questions that like I have. Um, okay, so they just made the same thing. So outdoor adventure gear enthusiast, they made one for Sarah. Two is Michael, classic car restoration. Oh, interesting, classic car restoration. And then um, health and fitness nutritional supplements enthusiast. So let's make a very broad statement really quick. Do we, th do we think that one of these three options could potentially be a seven figure business. Yes, any one of these could work. So now it's how do you run this product through your own set of criteria to get it that far? I think there is benefit to having been a private label seller in the past for me personally, because I understand what that process looks like a little bit more, right? So if I go into like car restoration, I see some of these products here, it's not so unfamiliar to me what's happening here, right? The fact that they're working, I, I understand the whole flow of the business. They're working with a supplier to make this for them. Their job is to make packaging and to listen to the customer and bring that thing to the customer. And then, um, so what I guess what I'm trying to say here is a, a lot of this, if you're a beginner, might be going over your head, right? And, and don't get overwhelmed by that because entrepreneurship is the state of uncertainty. That's what our whole lives are as entrepreneurs. We just don't know. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. You can see what we did in the past and where we wish we had done, but in the moment, you just don't know. So you have to work on building your skills to get to the point where you you are actually executing on the thing that you want to be working on for the next five years. Um, Alex Ramosi has shed a lot of light on that to me personally. Like I just love watching his YouTube videos and really talks about that idea a lot. So how I'm tying that back into this is... You know, you can go find any one of these products and just approach it of like, approach it from the, the thought process of like, I'm just gonna make a different product here. You're always behind the leading brand then because you're just looking at what they did do in something a little different. Well, what if instead you're not focusing on them, you're focusing on the customer specifically. So the second thing I asked it after, I asked ChatGPT after it found me a potential product market was I asked it about the person in there. And I went and looked up all this information about the person in there. I didn't ask it anything about the product, right? There's, I've seen videos like this and it's like, find me Amazon FBA products and then find me differentiations for them. Differentiations is just different than the competitor. You wanna be better than the competitor. What's better than the competitor? More valuable to the customer, okay? So rant over. Now, car restoration, again, these have problems. So one of the things that I also like to look for in a product is that there are problems to solve. Cheers, that's all vodka. No, I'm just kidding, it's water. $24,000 per month in sales, $40,000 per month in sales. They have four star reviews, what's going on here? And it might even be less than that. So which one has more reviews? This one has more, this one has more revenue and it's more expensive because maybe of the bundle. So let's go into this one. I wanna do the one that has more sales. And it says it doesn't last very long in super hot Texas. 
And better yet, I can use, instead of reading things like a barbarian, I can use review insights and get some, okay, those are all mostly positive. Let's go to something like uh, 1.6 star rating on average. So when the term at all is used. Waste of time, didn't do anything, don't recommend it at all. Um, doesn't work at all, does not last at all. Um, colored and not impressive at all. Three hours I put into my tires and the stuff was a joke. So it seems like uh, maybe heat has a lot to do with this. Okay, interesting. Because um, that's something that can be formulated to be different. Longevity and heat. Not impressed with this product. So there seems to be a general dislike in the product. Um, it's just not doing what it says on a consistent enough basis. You're always going to have a few people to give you five stars unless you have an absolute garbage product. Always going to have a few people that give you three or four stars. And it's that ratio that you're working on. You don't have, no one has five stars at 5,000 review rates. It just doesn't happen that way. You're always going to have people that are using it wrong. But ultimately, if your product's really easy to use, and it's a really good product, you increase that ratio. So you end up with a 4.7 rating, not a 4.2, 4.8 rating, not a 4.2. Uh, so what we have here is something that could actually drive sales to us, right? The fact that there is a problem to solve means that we take all of that knowledge about what's going wrong here and we display the fact that we've solved that with our listing. You know, in my listing that I sell right now, um, one, we went into the market with like this one common goal almost all reviews mention this, that is gonna be on our listing. And so it's like our tagline of the brand and of the product is like, we fixed this. Like this isn't gonna happen with our product, okay? Ceramic dry seal, so tires, vinyl, one bottle, one cut. So, so see, it's not telling me anything. It's not saying anything, right? It's kind of gimmicky. It's just, I didn't learn anything by this. So imagine if I make a product that A has, a tire on it. I mean, what are we thinking here? There's no tire on the packaging. It's four tires. Um, or maybe it's four, no matter what it's for, really. Uh, tires, vinyl, and plastic. Okay, there you go. So it's just a sealant. Have one of those things on the packaging, better branding, and then have a clear signal with the listing that we've actually fixed what's wrong with the product. Okay, so it would be interesting to now use AI to take what we know is wrong about this. So how many people found this helpful? Only 12. One thing that I like to do is look at the really helpful voted reviews. And that's one of the main reasons that Helium 10's review insights is uh, so powerful is because we can automatically just go find the most highly rated helpful listing under overview. It's how they sort it, which is really cool. Um, so we'll take some of those that aren't all five stars, the ones that actually have brought up issues with the product. And it, it does look like 17% um, of people are giving this a one star rating. That's absolutely horrid. That's horrendous. So we don't want that, right? Um, so it looks like the overviews, most of the helpful voted ones actually weren't um, bad reviews because I think some of the bad reviews aren't that helpful. So th there's your problem that you get in. But usually people that are upset don't write big, long reviews. Usually people that found it helpful or want to help other people write longer reviews. So you have to do a little bit of deep diving here. Um, but let's just, let's just go back to the reviews and look for a long one-star review that was actually well written so that we can I'm trying maybe like a three star. Sometimes those can be more helpful. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And then 10 people found this helpful and it was longer. So we'll take that review and we'll come back to AI and we'll ask it to, can you come up with a solution to this review problems about this car restoration product. And let's just see what it says. So it's clear the review reviewer was disappointed with the tire dressing product and had several issues with it. To address their problems, it's important to provide a solution. 
Um, so basically, here's the um, solution. So off-roading um, considerations, an alternative product. So they mentioned they're returning to a different brand. Um, I wonder what's better about that brand. So it was probably the counter to this. So enhanced longevity. Um, they're doing 5,000 miles a month. That's insane. To enhance longevity of the dressing, you might consider applying additional coats. So they're, they're, AI is treating this like a re direct response to that customer. Instead of responding, response to, to the customer, just tell me the product creator how to make it better. And hopefully it doesn't care that I misspelled some stuff. Okay, here we go. Now this is the right format, at least. So these are different attributes about the product that people care about. So transparency in the product description. So people might have buyer's remorse because they feel like it's not doing what the product said. So one of the problems that you know Amazon sellers make is they like to overpromise and underdeliver. <laughs> Instead, you should underdeliver and overpromise, obviously, because then people want to leave a positive review because they got more than what they were expecting. If you meet expectations, you likely don't get a review. People who leave reviews generally were way underwhelmed or overwhelmed with joy at how well that it worked. So you get the extremes. That's why three-star reviews are often the least amount given. It's usually five and one, <laughs> like four is the next in line. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about Amazon FBA, I do have a course called Savage Sellers down below. There's two different tiers. The first one, you get a live Q&A, monthly product picks, new course video every week, member posts, and much more um, custom templates, etc. In the other tier, you get a one-on-one -on -one call with me plus everything that I just mentioned. So if that sounds helpful to you, um, be sure to sign up with the link in the description. For all, I think this was kind of an interesting um, attempt at using AI to solve some of the problems we have, but not from like a private label perspective, more of a brand building perspective that's got the emphasis on the customer. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know. I'm going to stop it here so we don't go on too long, but um, let me let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more AI based Amazon FBA YouTube videos and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other future videos. I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Later.